Hey, 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 what's happening, amazing traders? How's it going? Um, welcome to another segment of Trader Talk. I'd like to officially welcome you guys to a new week. Today's Tuesday. And like I said um, in my previous videos, I'll try as much as possible to come on here every single Tuesday to ensure that you guys are updated as to what exactly I'm trading. Now, today, you have to understand that I'm very tired. I actually have a headache, um, but I've made a commitment to you guys, so I'm going to do exactly just that. Now, this video isn't going to be that long. Hopefully, it's not because I need to head to, um, obviously, it's Champions League tonight. Um, finally, I think Barcelona and PSG are playing today. Um, I'm quite excited. For those of you guys who know me and follow me on social media, you guys know I love to watch football. So, I'm going to make this as quick as... I'm going to put this video together as quickly as possible. So, ensure to stay till the very end. If you haven't already subscribed, I suggest you go ahead and smash the subscribe button right there. Drop me a comment. Drop me a like. This is exactly how I get this channel to grow. Now, before I get into that... Um, I just wanted to quickly tell you guys um, about a couple of modules that I'm actually updated on the Forex Mastery course. One module that I realized that I actually, uh, is, there's, a part, there's a portion of the course that I feel like I left out, which I feel could have really benefited the students, which is actually trader psychology. So in the trader psychology video, I'm actually speaking from my heart. I'm like, I'm, I'm telling you like this is exactly how you need to look at the market this is a psychology you need to have in order for you to become consistently profitable in the market and obviously i break down a couple more charts i speak about actually there's a there's a section called part two of um, dynamic areas of support and resistance where i'm actually going over how to go about plotting you guys see the way i plot my support and resistance on my chart they look beautiful they look nice I realized that the previous video that was on the course, um, I just only did it once. So this one, I'm going to have a part two um, as to how exactly I go about breaking down and um, analyzing the charts. Basically, I'm just like, you know, telling you guys, just updating you guys, basically. I, you know, because when I created the Forex Mastery program, I just wanted to put together a course and quickly put it out there to help as many people as I can. But as time goes on, obviously, I have to make it even better. A lot of you guys are sending me messages like, oh my God, the Forex Mastery course has changed my life. I'm like, thank God, I'm happy it has changed your life. However, I feel like it can even be better. So if you haven't already grabbed the Forex Mastery course, the link is always going to be down there. As below, is as cheap as 99 bucks. Um, if indeed you want to stand a chance at succeeding in Forex, I suggest you do yourself, do your, your, your future, and do your bank account, your trading account, a trading account a favor, and grab the Forex Mastery program. Now, enough about the Forex Mastery program let's jump into my charts as to i know i know exact i let's jump into my charts because i know exactly why you guys are here today you guys want to see some technical so pardon me if i may if i'm a bit slow guys i'm tired man today i didn't plan to just do anything i just wanted to chill but obviously i love my my forex followers so much and you guys give me life so you know what let's jump into the charts and see exactly what we have for today all right traders what's happening people i want to officially welcome you inside of my screen now guys today we're going to kick this off with AUD USD, australian dollar against the us dollar and i'm just going to zoom out pretty nicely where we left off last week was uh, AUD USD had put in obviously we were able to establish that we're in a bullish trend if you haven't if you missed the part where we established the, the overall direction of AUD USD you might need to check um, my previous trader talk video um, where I speak about what how we came about being bullish on AUD USD I did an entire top-down analysis on AUD USD which I am in no mood to do again today so if you want to find how i broke it down and how i came about being bullish i think trade trader talk volume one speaks about that so just go and go and check that out anyways guys the last time we the last place we left off we had gone long aud usd um I'll just explain let me go four hour time frame why is this shit taking forever to load all right cool i'm just gonna adjust this pretty a little bit lower this was the level okay I'm going to delete some of my stuff here because I don't like when my charts start looking a bit tacky, right? So just to zoom in pretty nicely on the four hour time frame, our buy position was somewhere around here. We broke back into this level. Uh, I said a bounce off of this level was good for a buy. So we went long somewhere around here. I said very specifically that first level targets must come at the touch of this um, kind of like descending trend line that is forming a triangle, right? So I took out about 
I think 30% of my position here. And I said uh, I'm gonna take out on I'm gonna take out another chunk of my position once we hit the hundred percent retracement. Now, ideally, when I get into trades like this, when I buy somewhere around here, um, I usually wait for the market to come to my hundred percent retracement for me to take out a certain portion of my trade. Uh, however, this case, because guys, you have to understand that if I see any significant resistance in in between me and my goal, if I see any significant resistance in between me and my let me drag this here in between me and my overall target i'm going to at least try and bank some profit around that region because guys the last thing i want is to be in profit and then the, because i'm so silly to you know rather i'm so greedy to just i i'll accept the fact that there's a resistance there and then i get into the trade and then it comes here and it reverses down i would have hated myself for that so i took out i don't i don't care how little i made from here to here but i had to take out at least 20 25 percent of my position around here um around here i have already banked so at this point i have in total i have closed uh, about i think i bought i had about 7.8 lots long on this so i have closed out I think I closed out about two point something here and another one point something here. I can't exactly remember properly. Um, just know that 50% of my position at this point has been closed. Uh, um, I haven't made as much as I would like to make on this on this current trading opportunity. However, I have made money. Period. Okay. Um, for me, that's a that's a plus. That's at the end of the day, I'm gonna go to the bank and withdraw my profit. I don't care how little it is. Um, but I mean, do the math. Seven. 7.8 lots uh, multiplied by all the pips we've made so far is still quite significant um, if you ask me so yeah that's pretty much it so um, now we have come to this point um, of we have come to this point of 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 indecision okay guys you always know forex mastery students i always tell you guys at the 100 percent retracement always take out your profit now i'm not saying that this market is going to reverse at this point i'm just saying um this is a this is a resistance zone and we want to be extremely careful around here now my overall targets are all the way up here without a doubt um so i'm gonna let the remaining about 3.26 lots of my position run um and i've moved my stop losses which was somewhere around here past break even now what could potentially happen in AUDUS in this case i pray i mean i'm hopeful because think about it if we break I mean, why won't I want the market to go higher? If we break above here to the upside, I'm going to make a lot of money. Actually, I'm even going to add some more trades to my, to my, I'm going to add some more positions to my trade even. So I'm hoping and I'm praying that we do in, in fact break higher. But you have to understand that I'm not the market. There's no trader in the world that can know for sure if this market is going to break higher. I only trade what I see okay i only use base i only use the clues that i see in front of me to trade the market now um what are the potential scenarios that might play out might play out once again if i come to the daily just to draw my trend lines properly always connect the dots on the outer this my chart is starting to annoy me all right cool i'm just going to draw this out pretty nicely so what potential scenarios could play out okay if i just make this a bit bigger okay as you can see at the 100 percent retracement we are definitely like tomorrow i can wake up and this market has blown past here but for you can see that we we came and we respected this level so it's not something you want to play around with right we definitely did respect this level so it's something that you want to have at the back of your mind that the 100 percent retracement is not something to play around with now moving on um what do i think can happen well um it's very possible very very possible that this market might want to come and shoot for this outer part of the trend line um before we head higher we might see maybe a cup form like this my stop losses are still somewhere here now why is my stop loss here remember i said to you guys my stop losses were somewhere around here i have now moved them once i lock in profit i move my stop loss slightly past break even so my stop losses for my remaining 3.26 lots that are open are going to be here i take it again i had 7.8 lots open i closed some here close some here anytime i take profit out i always move my stop loss slightly past break even so at this point this trade is completely risk-free 
okay completely risk-free anything from here is just going to be more profit for me okay so um two things can happen we can just blow out of here or this market might want to knife down here i might want to knife down here a little bit before we now head higher i cannot say for certain but i know you guys are obviously praying we do that because if i come on a four hour time frame just to see if we have formed any form of a base um if i just highlight this pretty nicely somewhere around here you guys are probably waiting for a pullback in here to obviously jump on potential buy opportunities um yeah you can do that but i would not exactly be doing that myself because for the fact that we've come and we've stopped here to me this looks like a double top okay this looks to me like a double top so we can pull it back in here we can pull back to test this trend line i don't know when we pull back based on how we based on how we pull back okay and how we are able to form um a double bottom in this region somewhere around here so if we come in here and obviously i see some form of a double bottom or a proper solid base and put a potential market manipulation and then it jump back up somewhere around here then i could be looking to potentially add some more buy you know to carry to the upside um but i don't know at the moment right now this is a clear case of a potential i won't say a brief, it's not a reversal just yet is it it's just a clear case of profit taking so at this point i'm gonna have to watch i'm gonna have to wait till probably this time it's gonna take maybe like a week for us to really know and for those of you guys who just want to trade and all that guys um you're like so somebody's commenting the way you trade it like i don't like you just it wastes time <laughs> Cool, 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 you can stick to lower time frames. I tell you what, the reason why I, I, my trades waste time is because I like to, when I trade on when I trade on these kind of time frames, I stand a higher chance of becoming successful. I stand a higher chance of making what profitable trades. You know, that's just the reality of things. So I stand a better chance of making what profitable trades so um, for those of you who are still struggling with lower time frame that's exactly why you're still struggling okay lower time frames don't exactly give you um the bigger picture like the higher time frames give you so guys this is AUD USD in a nutshell um nothing too much for us to see here hopefully i hope it doesn't come down here i hope it just goes up but from the look of things it might just come to test this level around here so i'm just going to take this out and i'm just going to watch to see or guys we can just knife all the way back down Whatever AUD wants to do, as he wants to do, at this point, I am completely and totally risk-free. So, this should be a lesson to the Forex Mastery students. This is why, at 100% retracement, always take something home. Take what? Something home. Good. So, this is AUD USD. Um, I'm going to obviously revisit this. I'm going to be monitoring it for the weeks ahead. We can come in here, we can bounce, we can come in here, we can bounce, whichever the case may be. I don't really know what's going to happen from here on what i need to make sure this market comes in here and it needs to tell me it needs to tell me period so this is AUD USD. i'm going to hop over to gold uh, actually no gold gold is annoying me let's see the euro first we'll, we'll treat the euro before we go over to uh we'll treat the euro before we go over to uh, guys you see today i'm a bit tired my brain is not exactly it's not exactly like not exactly clicking but yeah let's do euro okay so for those of you guys who do not know the euro is bullish um monthly time frame looks like a very nice triangle that is a very nice flag pattern um that has formed pretty nicely so we have this flag and we're now pointing all the way to the upside fibonacci's a b c so if I just draw my Fibonacci from swing low to swing high, which is somewhere around here. So this is A, B, C has completed. Now we're en route the D leg. So the D leg usually completes at, the, um, at this Fibonacci extension, which is kind of like in line with my resistance bar, just slightly above it. So I do expect the market to actually come in here and you know have a nice one so i'm bullish the euro actually i actually tried to hop on the buy trade but i think i must have gotten stopped out for um break even and some profit so this was the idea for the AU, um, for euro usd right so this is a b c we're en route this big guy about here this is exactly where we're coming to we're en route this guy somewhere around here so the only thing i'm looking for what is buy opportunities now we have also been able to 
our trigger has our our trade has been um, our higher time frame our higher time frame like kind of like entry has been triggered because the, the criteria was for us to break above this resistance and come and close which has happened so higher time frame where we should have been in the buy but we don't trade on higher time frames we have to scale to lower time frames to refine our entry so now let's look at some potential entries that we can obviously trade now i remember speaking in my previous video where i said the market needs to pull back into here for a nice buy the market did pull back into that level and i went long um at the, at the spike off of this area right about here this is exactly where i went long um i think if i drop my fibonacci from swing low to swing high that would make more sense oh my goodness fibonacci come here all right cool so my fibonacci so this is the fibonacci call so we did indeed come in to the fibonacci level and at the bounce of here was ex exactly where i decided to go long on euro dollar um i went long somewhere about here i think as the candle was still kind of like moving forward i decided to hop in a buy um because i just knew like this was going to be a huge bounce um and then my overall target obviously is at the all the way at the top 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 However, um, because of the way I'm in now, this I'm having to scale to a one hour time frame to refine my entry. Okay, so the rules still apply. Now, this is I want you guys to this is something I need to educate you guys about. Um, the rules still apply if you wherever it is you get into a trade. Okay, once you click that buy button, your first level target must come always come at the 100% retracement, always be it a daily, monthly, weekly, one hour time frame. I know my overall target is miles away, but what, what, why did I get into this trade? I got into this trade because of this A, B, C. So it's a Fibonacci within a Fibonacci, right? So we spotted the bigger picture, bigger picture on the higher time frame, scale to a lower time frame to try and buy, um, so so that we can catch the entire to to, to catch the, the move on the bigger picture. So got into a buy somewhere around here. However my first level targets must always come here why because if anything wants to go wrong one thing i've learned about forex over the years if anything wants to go wrong as long as you've predicted in the correct direction if anything wants to go wrong at all what usually happens is that the market must come to the 100 percent retracement before it decides to what change its mind you know it must come and at least the market will always give you clues always okay that's one thing about forex it will always give you clues before it starts to act mad okay so when i see people getting into losing trades i already know um chances are that you probably did not do the proper thing in terms of your analysis so the euro got long somewhere around here was able to make some pips all the way here um what happened was my stop losses believe you me were all the way wide as hell now it might look like my stop losses were very wide on this trade um give me a sec it might look like my stop losses were quite wide on this trade. Now let's actually talk some figures, right? Let's let's you guys need to listen to what I have to say, right? So this is my buy position somewhere around here. I think I can remember the price. I, I think I got long at about 1.2112. Give me a second. I need to show you guys something. Oh my god, I forgot what I wanted to show you guys. Think that see think think think. What did you want to show? Okay, I remember. Good long position so my long positions were somewhere around here my stop losses were actually somewhere below here now on this trade you have to remember that my take profit my first level take profit as you can see i have not even like i haven't even so in this trade the risk the, the risk in terms of pips is about 75 pips right and is it 75 pips give me give me a sec guys i need to confirm this so amount says 75 here yeah, amount at the top here says let's just give a rough estimate right let's say um this is the, the stop loss is 75 pips now a risk to reward ratio simply means that if this was 1.0 it simply means that let's say this my stop loss is, a, is 75 pips if the risk to reward has said this was 1.0, it will simply mean that my reward is equal to my risk. So, um, as you can see in this case, this is 0.9. So, that simply means that my risk, me closing out my first position, I have not even made 
what I risk risk on the trade. So let's say I risk three hundred dollars on this trade. Zero point nine would simply mean that I have only made two hundred and ninety dollars on this trade, as in a zero point nine risk to reward. Um, if it was one point zero, it would simply mean that if I risk three hundred, this would mean like a three risking three hundred to make three hundred. Now, what I'm trying to explain here, in essence, is my first level target was not even like I didn't even make that much. But the most important thing is I have taken money out of the market prior. To, first of all, I was correct. I've preserved my capital. Secondly, I have taken something out of the market. Now you have to understand that the overall picture is actually looking like this. Okay, if that buy trade would have worked out, my overall picture is actually looking something like this. It's huge. This is exactly how I like to trade, and this is exactly the kind of things trades I like to take. I like to take um, I like to take advantage of. Don't forget, guys, we're playing this bigger picture. A, B, C, D completion is somewhere around there. So I'll just leave my stop loss somewhere in the middle of this around here. Look at the risk to reward. It's absolutely crazy. Okay? It's absolutely mind-blowing. Okay? Now, if I come back down to a lower time frame, and let's see what the risk is. So this is looking like a 9.7. Five. If I just even adjust this a little bit more, I can actually get a 10 to 1 on this. So in this typical trade where I have risked 3% of my account, a risk to reward of 10 to 1 would actually yield me back 30% return on my capital. Okay. Um, obviously, because of the fact that I've taken some, some, I've closed 50% of my position, what that will actually mean in hindsight is if I add everything together, I would have probably banked at least 19 to 22% of my capital if this trade had played out the way I wanted it to play out. Like you have to understand, like I'm trying to be, I'm trying to, the essence, guys, is to find an opportunity on a higher time frame and then scroll to a lower time frame and then try and catch that bigger picture but with a smaller stop loss placement. This is the idea. Um, so this is exactly what I was trying to do here. Um, obviously, as you can see, the market was not having it. Um, it tried to break above. I would have loved for this thing to just take off all the way to the upside. I would have like that. What this would have meant for me is I would have been able to bank a significant amount of money together with AUD, USD, Euro, Dollar for the year. I think I would have. And are there any trade major trades I've taken this year? Um, for between a Euro USD and AUD USD, I would have probably returned in total of about thirty percent of my capital. That would have meant that I have outperformed every single financial um, instrument in the world, apart from Bitcoin, obviously. So thirty percent in February. Um, obviously, you can you do the math, but a lot of traders are not satisfied with that. Um, they just they want to double their account overnight, which doesn't really make any sense. 30% of how much I'm trading is a lot of money. As a matter of fact, I won't have even needed to trade for a while. Um, I would have... Usually, at the end of the year, I'm looking to make about 80% return. The truth is, I always overshoot that. I probably return some years, 500, 600% return. But I always set like something very realistic for myself. In 12 months, I want to return between 60 to 80%. Once I hit my 60 to 80% goal, every other thing outside that is a bonus for me. But I don't go about setting ridiculous targets like, I want to make 10% every month now. 60%, 80%, I'm able to relax, I'm able to go weeks without trading, I'm able to allow the market breathe, I'm able to just chill, I'm able, not, I'm able to not be emotionally attached to the market, okay, and I just trade as the months come by, if I see more favorable opportunities, I take advantage of them, and at the end of the year, usually sometimes 500 600 sometimes even 800 percent return on investment i'm able to make why because i set a very low target for myself and as the months unfold as the trades come by i stick to my rules i just know that last last i know i set a target of 60 percent for myself at the end of the year i know i will definitely hit hit my target you know, as long as I stick to my rules and all that. And sticking to my rules actually even helps me exceed, like I was saying, helps me exceed my my goals and all that. So, um, back to what I was saying. Now, if you get into a trade and then the market gets to your 100% retracement, it's like in this case, let me tell you what I'm going to do. 
for instance, this market has hit my 100% retracement. So I've taken out a certain portion of my trade and this market has actually come to stop me out for break even usually when i move my stop losses to break even i move it to at least between plus 10 or plus 15 pips above my break even point just to cover the spread and all that stuff um so when you get into a trade and then the market stops you out for you know gets to the 100 percent retracement and just stops going and actually comes to stop you out for break even what you should actually do is this is simple as abc Come and put a resistance bar above the 100% retracement and say to yourself, I would not trade this market until we come back above this level period. Right now, whatever the euro does, I'm not interested. As long as we are below this bar, I'm, you might as well be bearish. Maybe he wants to come back down and test here. I don't know. I don't, give a, I don't really give a rat's ass, right? I have tried to, I have attempted to get into the trade, but the market has told me it is not ready to go higher. The only way, the only, 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 only way the market can now tell me that it is indeed ready to go higher. Guys, think about it. Shibi, the market wants to come here. Before you get here, you have to pass here, right? Think about it. Before we get here, this is my overall target. We will need to cross here, right? Good. So, if you're going to cross here eventually, I'm going to wait for you because I've tried to attempt you. However, you did not cooperate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my resistance bar here. Once we come and break above here and we close above here, I will then, only then will I be interested in jumping on the euro dollar again. I know it would have been very nice for this one to play out. But hey guys, that's just the way the market goes. I close my charts and I go and chill. Like whatever the market wants to do is entirely up to it. But I will follow the rules of the game. Okay? Following the rules of the game will pay you on what? The long run. So guys, Euro USD in a nutshell. I'm going to be waiting for us to come and break 1.2142 to the upside. If that doesn't happen, expect further downside on the Euro. Maybe it wants to come and give us a double bottom in this region around here. Who knows? Okay? So always have that in the back of your mind. Um, we're just going to watch to see what the market does. But I doubt because um, the dollar is looking a bit weak. But I don't know anyways. Anyways, moving on to GBPUSD, um, which has actually been absolutely amazing. Guys, do you remember when I told you guys that my overall target for GBPUSD was actually in this region around here? Not only did we come and um, destroy this... Uh, not only did we come and destroy, to, not only did we come and hit, no, no, this was actually not my level. Let me just adjust this properly. I need to look left on Euro, on GBPUS. Actually, that's actually correct. <sighs> that's actually correct. Cool. So, um, we d remember this trade when I spoke to you guys that we weren't able to take it due to some unforeseen circumstances. Anyways, um, GBPUSD has come to hit the target. I told you I was 100% certain we we're going to come here. Well, not only have we come here, we have broken above and we have tested. We have come and we have sat down on this place. Good. Thank God I'm actually on the daily time frame. I actually just found something quite profound. Um, judging from our levels, we know that next, just by looking left, we know that our next level target is here. We have all this space to trade. So we 1.379, call it 1.3800, between 1.3800 and 1.4200 is roughly about, I would say 400 pips, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, 14 minus, actually. 1.4200 and this is 1.38 so yeah 12 minus 8 is 4 so we have a we have we have about 400 pips to play with between here and here so gbp usd guys is very very bullish i see no reason why there's if i look left there's nothing stopping us from getting to the promised land which is here um, if I come on the monthly time frame, I'm very sure we have some very strong bullish engulfing candles that uh, you can see this is pretty nice. This has closed here. As you can see on the monthly time frame, this is the major level. Tested it here, tested it here, we tested it here, although we broke above, but you could tell this level is a force to reckon with. And look, guys, it's sometime in January of 2018. Sometime of January 2018, we've tested we tested this level one month, two months, three months, four months. We spent kissing this level's ass. That's what we did. 
before we came down so guys best believe on the way on the market's way back to the upside we are definitely going to what you know this level is a magnet is a magnet if you look even back all the way back to 2001 this level was tested so on our way back to the upside and obviously you know that there's a triple bottom that has formed here um gbp usd is actually actually on its way to the upside give me a sec let me see if there's any reason why this so you can see guys even this major wow what i'm going to do is i'm going to sit down and i'm going to do a full sketch analysis on gbp usd's future okay because i'm seeing some very interesting stuff on the charts i haven't really had the time to look at it properly but i'm going to do that i can see some 5000 move picture playing out right so it's huge for gbp usd guys don't forget you heard it here first on dapsy's forex radio coming to you live from the united arab emirates <laughs> anyways back to what i was saying so what do we look out for as in what are we looking out for in in gbp usd it's very simple and straightforward we have broken above clear above where there's nothing stopping us from getting here however we need to look for what trading opportunities now i know for a fact because this is a demand level somewhere around here it's a minor level um but it's a demand level so i i will not be surprised if gbp usd comes to test this level about here although there's an inner trend line that is playing at the moment but i feel we're going to come and test here before we eventually bounce uh, eventually continue to the upside so from what i can see um the us um the dollar base pairs are actually retracing um euro is looking like he wants to pull back for further upside gbp usd is looking like he wants to pull back for further upside um yes looking like you want to pull back for the upside um so yeah so gbp usd i don't think you should be buying in at the moment i think we are coming in for a heavy retracement so guys that's aud usd gbp usd and last but not the least on my list which is gold which was actually showing some promising signs today but obviously it has started acting like it's mad yet again <laughs> i told you guys guys in my previous video that gold i'm going to leave gold for a while so that i'm not tempted to place in any trades that i'm going to regret okay i'm just going to do something very simple i'm just going to put this resistance bar somewhere around here so i'm going to put this one as well usually what i do when i when i when i feel like the market is not cooperating i just leave my levels there and i just watch and allow the market pretty much play out and see what happens this is the point where i sit back and watch gold and see how exactly it reacts to my key levels okay so um yeah from what i can see on gold we're struggling around this major monthly level struggling we don't know if we want to stay above if we want to come lower um but guys once again if gold wants to come lower i do believe we're going to obviously bleed into this level somewhere around here um without a doubt okay we're definitely going to bleed into this level here without a doubt and if we indeed we do conquer that level we're obviously going to come all the way back down below here so i'm just going to be watching gold is it gold is up to you um however as long as you're magnetic to this level i'm not interested in you mr gold all right guys so this is my trader talk update for today um, i'm gonna catch you guys in my other screen once again i'm sorry i couldn't give you guys trading opportunities to take home with today um unlike other days but just watch out for the pairs that i told you about watch out for the euro um don't be in a hurry allow the euro break above the level that i told you guys about for the upside all these things i'm saying is I, i'm just all of these are just protective measures so that you don't get into the wrong trade for me capital preservation is priority okay once we can preserve our capital first then we can talk about making some profit and then we go and catch the entire profit like wham just catch everything okay so capital preservation so we need to put all these measures in place to ensure that we don't run into trouble and then next thing is entries next thing is trade management when we get into the trade we also have to ensure that the profit that has been given to us we don't give it back by locking in profit and obviously closing a portion of our trades and then the next phase of that is to now allow the market run um as far and wild as it wants to run so guys i'll catch you guys on my other screen thank you so much for staying till the very end of this trader talk tuesday see you guys on my other screen take it easy and cheers 
All right, my Crytons, there you go. This is exactly what I have for today. The Euro, already told you what to do with that. With Gold, already told you what to do with that. GBP, USD, easy to trade. Um, so that's exactly what I'm going to be looking at for the week ahead. I know I didn't really give you guys that many trade calls. However, you have to understand that it's not every week that you have to keep clicking buttons. Some weeks you just need to relax, sit back and allow the market make money for you or better still allow the market come to you and give you those trading opportunities that you want to trade. On the Forex Mastery course, this is what I keep stressing. You don't have to be clicking buttons. The most profitable traders are not always in front of their screen. The most profitable traders are not the ones always clicking buttons the most profitable traders are the ones that trade and get the fuck out they go and do other things they go spend time with their family they go and chill they go and do whatever thing it is they like to do trade close the laptop and go and do other shit all right guys thank you so much for sticking to the very end if you found this video very helpful once again do not forget to drop me a comment drop me a like if you drop me a comment i'll be very happy because the more comments i get on my videos the more YouTube promotes the videos and ranks it higher and the bigger our community gets. And if you drop me a comment, I can see who you are. And when you now eventually send me a personal message, I'll give you an example. Some people are always commenting on my videos. So when they message me on Telegram, I'm like, I know this name. So I, I'm more motivated to answering your questions when you send me a message. So drop me a comment. It helps the channel and it helps our relationship become better as well. All right, guys. Thank you so much and take it easy. And... Peace out.